Appendices 41 to 50 of Stories of Old Greece and Rome by Emily Kip Baker. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Appendices 41 to 50. Appendix 41. Palaemon was usually represented riding on a dolphin. He was called Portumnus by the Romans, and was believed to have jurisdiction over the ports and shores. Some authorities state that the Isthmian games held on the Isthmus of Corinth were in honour of Neptune instead of Palaemon. The divinities of the lakes, rivers, fountains, etc., were hoary river gods, slender youths, beautiful maidens, and sometimes children. The famous statue called Father Nile is in the Vatican at Rome. Appendix 42 Bacchus was worshipped very widely throughout the ancient world, and many festivals were held in his honour. The most noted were the Greater and Lesser Dionysia, the Liberalia, and the Bacchanalia. Bacchus is generally represented as crowned with ivy or grape leaves, and bearing an ivy-circled wand, the Thyrsus. He rides in a chariot drawn by panthers or leopards. Poems Semele by Edward R. Sill Alexander's Feast by John Dryden, The Praise of Dionysus by Edmund Goss, Triumph of Bacchus by Rodin Noel, Sophron's Hymn to Bacchus by Walter S. Landor, Prelude to Songs Before Sunrise by Algernon C. Swinburne. Appendix 43. As the ass was reverenced in Phrygia, the acquisition of ass's ears may not have been such a disgrace as we imagine. Ovid thus describes Midas's golden touch. Whose powerful hands the bread no sooner hold than all its substance is transformed to gold. Up to his mouth he lifts the savoury meat, which turns to gold as he attempts to eat. His patron's noble juice of purple hue, touched by his lips, a gilded cordial grew unfit for drink, and, wondrous to behold, it trickles from his jaws a fluid gold. The rich poor fool, confounded with surprise, starving in all his various plenty lies. Croxall's Translation Appendix 44 Fauns and satyrs have been favourite subjects in art, and especially in sculpture. The most famous are the fawn of Praxiteles, Vatican copy. The Dancing Fawn, Lateran, Rome, Dancing Fawn, Sleeping Fawn, Drunken Fawn, and Fawn and Bacchus, National Museum, Naples, Sleeping Satyr, or the Barberini Fawn, Glyptotech, Munich. The use of the fawn in literature is best known in Hawthorne's The Marble Fawn. References made to fawns and naiads in Milton's Lycidas. Robert Buchanan has two poems entitled The Satyr and the Naiad. Appendix 45 Poems Hymn to Pan by John Keats The Dead Pan by Elizabeth B. Browning Hymn of Pan by Percy B. Shelley Cupid and Pan by Walter S. Landor Pan by Robert Buchanan Pan and Luna by Robert Browning Song of the Priest of Pan and Song of Pan in the Faithful Shepherdess by Fletcher Appendix 46 Keats in Endymion alludes to Dryope thus She took a lute from which their pulsing came a lively prelude fashioning the way in which her voice should wander twas a lay more subtle cadenced more forest wild than Dryope's lone lulling of her child Poem Dryope by Walter S. Landor. Appendix 47. James R. Lowell has taken the story of Rhoecus as the subject of one of his finest poems. Here now this fairy legend of old Greece, as full of freedom, youth, and beauty still, as the immortal freshness of that grace carved for all ages on some Attic frieze. Poem. The Hamadryad by Walter S. Landor. Appendix 48 Janus is not the only one among the Greek and Latin deities whose name has been given to a part of the week or year. In Latin the names of the days are Dies Solis, Sunday, Dies Lunae, Moonday, 
Dies Martis, Mars Day, Dies Mercury, Mercury's Day, Dies Jovis, Jove's Day, Dies Veneris, Venus's Day, Dies Saturni, Saturn's Day. Appendix 49 Austin Dobson has a poem, The Death of Procris. Moore, in his legendary ballads, devotes one ballad to Cephalus and Procris. Appendix 50 The finest poetic treatment of the sadness of Tithonus over his immortal old age is in Tennyson's Tithonus. The following are a few lines from this poem which should be read in its entirety. Let me go, take back thy gift. Why should a man desire in any way to vary from the kindly race of men, or pass beyond the goal of ordinance, where all should pause, as is most meet for all? Coldly thy rosy shadows bathe me, cold are thy lights, and cold my wrinkled feet, upon thy glimmering thresholds, when the steam floats up from those dim fields about the homes of happy men that have the power to die. End of Appendices 41-50